Hey guys, just wanted to give you a few notes on some of the things that we're not going to cover that much in class, but are really important, especially if you are taking the AP test. Uh, these are some of the required things that you know about different innovations of the Industrial Revolution and some of the changes that were made that really also changed uh, transportation and communication. So here we go. Uh, the first major innovation is going to be Watt's steam engine. Um, they had developed steam engines prior to this, but James Watt basically kind of took the initiative to overhaul the previous design. Um, and basically, like, it was huge when we're talking about the Industrial Revolution. Um, once he figured out how to make this new type of steam engine, uh, basically factories that once relied on water to power their machines now could basically build factories wherever they wanted because they have this lovely steam engine. And so they're able to basically use coal and then build a factory wherever they want, which is obviously going to lead to more industrialization as we go on. And that's going to change culture. That's going to change society. It's going to change where people live. It's going to change what work looks like. Um, and so we're going to look at some of those things today. Um, one of the other major innovations that we just want you to be familiar with is the spinning jenny. Um, basically, it's a way where they could improve on the basic spinning wheel that we had in the past, uh, where you could only do basically one uh, wheel with, you know, one line of thread. Um, and this way it was able to use basically many different spindles, as you guys can kind of see in here. Um, still, we have one wheel, but they're able to basically spin significantly more thread um, at once. This was basically something that happened was it then decreased the need for laborers, people that worked, oops, that went off the screen, laborers, but also um, it was basically easier to be faster. And they were able to create things in that way. The power loom, very similar in this. Uh, it was steam powered and it was basically this mechanically operated version of a regular loom. Um, if you don't know what a loom is, it's basically a device that combines thread to make cloth. Um, and so they were able to do this and became more efficient. And then because it was less, uh, you don't need strength as much because the machine will do a lot of the work, women replaced most of the men as we weavers. And so we see an increase in women at work. I keep running off the screen. Okay, so increase in women. Uh, another one, and this one we probably have heard a lot about because it's very famous in American history, but Eli Whitney's invention of the cotton gin basically revolutionized the cotton industry in the United States. Um, prior to this, farmers were really basically, if you kind of have cotton, within it are all these different like, cotton seeds, and you can't use it until you remove the seeds. And if you kind of think of it like little burrs, um, little seeds that just won't come out, um, they were trying to do this by hand. It's really, really hard to do. Um, and so this was basically a seed-removing device um, that basically you could generate up to 50 pounds of clean cotton daily, um, making basically the cotton industry just skyrocket um, as well. And so we see that's one of the other effects of the Industrial Revolution. Another kind of agricultural development was the mechanical reaper. And basically, if you just think about this, um, some of this stuff is just so, like, we just are very familiar with it. But I want you to think back to the day where, like, people by hand would have to go off into the fields to cut down whatever they were growing. Um, and so the first reapers were able to cut the standing grain, um, and then they had a revolving reel, and then it swept over, and it raked up the things that they had just cut down. Um, and this just made it crazy fast. If you want to write that down, crazy fast to cut down a field of wheat and be able to bundle these things together. And slowly and slowly they began to kind of improve on these different technologies um, and they became really quick. In general, like beforehand, a farmer would be able to harvest like three acres a day and the reaper made it up to like 10 acres a day. So crazy fast, uh, just if you're thinking of the difference of doing this by hand versus this, it's crazy. Um, also, we've all heard kind of this story before, probably the basically the invention of mass production and the assembly line. Um, we mostly know this for Ford and the Model T. 
But basically, before the Industrial Revolution, most goods were really produced in small workshops or at home. Um, you kind of had just home cottage industry. But mass production made it possible to manufacture goods really quick, really cheap. Um, and people only need to specialize at one job. And so if you were this guy, maybe you were the guy that put on a certain piece. Uh, and so you, all you would do whenever a car would come up is you would put on that one piece. Um, and so it made it really easy. You just had to do one thing. It basically, in many ways, made work uh, less difficult. You were not specialized. You couldn't build a whole car. You couldn't put something all the way together, but you only had to do one thing. Um, and this would allow them to do things much quicker. Um, we are going to see that major... The innovation that accelerated this really uh, was the assembly line, back to the Model T. And so it's really interesting to look kind of of these accomplishments is what this means. And I mean, obviously still today, we have um, still assembly lines in different fashion, a um, little bit better working conditions today. Um, but they were able to like, when they did this, they were able to build an entire car in 93 minutes, which is pretty incredible. Uh, so beyond just the innovations, the different inventions, we also see how this changed transportation and communication. And so these are kind of some big things you want to have down. First of all is the use of canals. Now that seems really simple, but I want you to think of when you start building large mechanical devices, uh, how you're supposed to move them. Um, and at this point in time, most of movement of goods had happened by animals. And so they needed to be able to move things that were very heavy uh, longer distances. And so the canal was able to be our solution. And so canals are basically just man-made rivers that they were able to then kind of connect to different factories um, where they could then carry lots of weight, something that you could never do in like with a horse and a buggy. So canals were able to help with that. Railroads, obviously, this is going to be the railroad boom. Um, by the early 1800s, high-pressure steam engines had become compact enough that they could move beyond just like a factory setting, but they could put them into kind of items that were able, like vehicles, transportation in this way. We kind of see the first steam-powered locomotive um, to hit Britain in 1804. And then for the first time, goods were transported over land, something other than animals. Not that we see a lot of cats uh, having things on their back. They pull. That looks like a cannon. Sorry, kitty. Either way, uh, they are not going to be work animals, but they can just be really cute, snuggly things. And so railroads, as we see, ultimately, people are going to use the railroads to ship things. It's going to be very fast, um, and you're going to see a lot of cargo be able to move distance. And in general, uh, people are going to be able to travel, and they're going to be able to kind of communicate faster as well. Steamships are going to become a big thing, steamboats in general. Uh, originally, it was more of a river steamship. They were used on different rivers to be able to move things up and down. Um, it was kind of a rocky process, but once they figured this out, this was a big deal um, to be able to do this, as well as, when we're looking at communication, the invention of the telegraph. Um, this is ba this is like huge if we're talking about human history and communication. It was the first time that man could communicate with another great distances apart. I mean, this is way beyond kind of like the the cans with the rope connected and you put your ear up to it. Uh, we are beyond that. Um, and this is way where we cut basically a telegraph will do Morse code, so we have dots and dashes. Um, that people are able to send over this. Originally, it was something that kind of like was more like printed into the paper, but then people kind of, it evolved into where people could hear the noises and they would actually write them down. Um, it was huge. We got, we still had letters, but this was a way to get information very quickly to another one. And so for a very long time, um, messages were relayed across great distances by these long systems of wires uh, via the telegraph. And so this is huge when we're talking about this. I mean, they are going to play, we're going to come back to the telegraph during World War One. Be aware of that. So 
very crazy. And then obviously another major change was going to be the invention of the telephone. You guys have also have heard this story with Alexander Graham Bell. Actually, there's another person that was actually inventing this, uh, but uh, Bell was able to get the patent in first, so that's why we know him way more today. But the telephone was actually a way where they were trying to uh, kind of improve on the telegraph, and this actually was what came about it. Wasn't the original intention that they could speak to somebody, but if you're thinking about how crazy this is that we're going to be able to speak to someone that was crazy distances away uh, was a huge thing. Now this only really impacted the people that really had more money, but either way, a big deal. And as we look at all these different things from the beginning to the end, we see major innovations, major changes, uh, it changed the way the world operated, and sometimes we think it is just so basic. But really, if you think about the difference of how people communicated um, via writing, via using animals and traveling that way, um, and then basically making and industrializing these different processes where you relied on machines to do them. And so major change... Um, Hopefully this is helpful so you get some of the basic innovations that happened and basically how you see the impact that it had on the world. So thanks for listening, and we will talk to you later.